As far as Microsoft's concerned, when you're digitally signing a workbook, it's really to confirm the identity of the person who sent you the workbook. It may or may not be enforceable in court if you're using it to bring somebody under legal obligation. But again, the whole focus is just to confirm the identity that the person who sent you this workbook is who they say they are. And they're typically issued by a certification authority or CA, a trusted third party, and Microsoft has a few they can recommend to you. Of course, they charge a monthly service fee. And these digital signatures through these third parties contain a serial number, digital signature of issuing authority, expiration dates, name and copy of certificate holder's public key, so the user can verify that the certificate is authentic. So those public keys, you can actually go online and look up the key and go, oh, okay, that key matches the digital signature that I see in here, that number. So this is from Kurt. Now, once the signature is attached to the document, it can't be modified without removing the digital signature. So you can appreciate that once I digitally sign this and send it to you, if somebody intercepts it, they have to remove that signature to modify it make changes, in which case it's no longer valid, or it shouldn't be. If you get a workbook from me that doesn't have that digital signature, well, it may mean that I forgot or that somebody else intercepted it and, and made changes to it, in which case you don't want to trust it and just ask me to reissue that document again. Now in this training video I'm just going to show you how to create a digital signature on your computer and it's only valid as far as verifying the authenticity of this workbook on this computer. If I send it to somebody else it's not authentic but I can walk you through the steps and if you choose to go through a third party and send this to somebody else then you'll have the idea of how to put this together. Now there's two types of digital signatures you have the non-visible and the visible. The non-visible means that it's just basically in a task pane if you want the details you have to open up the task pane. Visible means it'll actually have an X with the line underneath it. You can actually sign on the line or just type in your name. In either case, um, down at the window frame here, it'll have a little ribbon when it's digitally signed that you can click on to bring up the task pane for the non-visible. Now, to insert a non-visible signature, you would click on the Office logo button, come down to Prepare, and click on Add Signature. If you want a signature with a line and an X next to it so it is visible here, so you don't have to bring up the task pane, then you'll come up here, click on the Insert tab, come to the Text group, and click on the Signature button here. We'll click Close. First, we'll do the non-visible. Office logo to prepare to add a digital signature. You get this information window with the disclaimer. Just outlines again the purpose of the digital signature, combines the familiarity of the paper signing experience. While this feature provides users with the ability to verify a document's integrity, um, certain laws they may not be enforceable, so you don't want to bind anybody contractually to this, but in any case it's there as a disclaimer. And then for third-party digital signatures or services, and for a monthly service fee, you could go to the marketplace online that Microsoft recommends, or what I'm going to do in, in this case is just go ahead and create my own. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Again, it'll say, look, do you want to get a digital ID from a Microsoft partner with a monthly service fee, or do you want to go ahead and create your own? Now, if you create your own, other people will not be able to verify the authenticity of your signature. You will, however, be able to verify the authenticity of your signature, but only on this computer. So again, if you want to go ahead and purchase one online, get it, download it to your computer, they'll have the steps for you, and all you have to do is walk through the steps I'm showing you here to go ahead and digitally sign your workbook. So I'll go ahead and click Continue and click OK. Now Excel here only has a few fields, but if it was through a third-party vendor, they may have additional fields, but for digitally signing, I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the basics here. Now this is a one-time setup in that until this certificate expires, this digital ID, I can use it over and over again. So I just need to set up the digital ID once and click create. Once I create it, then it says, okay, go ahead and now sign the document with your digital ID that you just created. So it gives me the chance to give a purpose for signing this document. So whoever gets this document, they can not only see that I signed it with my digital ID, but they can see why I signed it. And I can say, well, I like the changes or I approve of the changes then just go ahead and click sign. Once you signed it, it says OK, we successfully have saved this with this document. Click OK. Opens up the task pane, there's my digital signature. Down on the window frame here you can see the little ribbon here. So if I close out of the task pane, all I have to do is click on the ribbon and it brings it back up. If I want more details about this digital signature, including why I signed this, you can hover over it, click on the drop down arrow, and get the details. And there it is. I like the changes close. Now notice up on the uh, ribbon here I can't make any changes. I can't come over here, I can't bold, italics, underline, it's all faded out. I can't make any changes within the workbook. If I come down here and try to hit delete, nothing. If I come down here, select range, try to do a bunch of typing, nothing. The only way I can make changes is if I come over here and I click on the drop down arrow or you can when in doubt right click, that's fine. Come down and remove the signature. It says, hey I'm gonna remove this permanently, are you okay with this? Click yes, click OK it's gone. So if I was some bad dude and I wanted to mess this workbook up, I'd remove the signature here. 
in which case I get all the formatting options. I can come in here, make changes to the workbook, save it, send it on to you, but then of course you wouldn't accept it because it has no digital signature, okay? Now again, once you go ahead and you first create the digital ID, once it's created, all you have to do is just sign it. So if I close out of here and I want to re-sign this again, I can come up here, click on the Office logo button, come down to Prepare, click Add a Digital Signature, click OK. Dumps you right to the second screen here. Remember, prior to this, I had a little screen that says, give me your name, your email address, your uh, company name, and the state. That's a one-time setup until this digital ID expires, which could be in 2009, or if you purchase this on a month-to-month -month basis through another third-party vendor, it could be next month. So it just skips that portion, just says, I like what I see. So I can just sign over and over again and never have to set up the digital ID again until it expires, click sign, and we're okay, we're back to square one again. Now, you may run into a problem and say, well, wait a second, Kurt. My digital ID, for example, when I click on the drop-down arrow and go to the details, I made some mistakes. I misspelled my name. I typed in K-U-R-T or accidentally typed in the wrong company name. It's just a mess. How can I go ahead and recreate that digital ID? Well, as far as your third-party vendors, you may have to talk to them. However, if it's just on your computer here, I'm going to click close and I'm going to show you how to uh, delete this uh, digital ID. First of all, let me go ahead and remove it from the workbook here and click OK and close out and save it. If you want to remove it, again, digital ID because you need to recreate it because you misspelled some names. Well, let me show you. We'll minimize the workbook. You're going to come up and you're going to open up your computer. You're going to double click on the computer or you can click on the office logo button and come over here and click on computer. You're going to go to the C drive and then you're going to come down here and then it's going to be the users or it's going to be the name of your computer well since I have several users on this computer I'll just double click users find the right user that I'm logged in as which is training and now the application data folder is what we need to access by default it's going to be hidden in my Windows Vista level 1 training video I show you how to reveal hidden folders the reason why these folders are hidden is because they have some operating programs in there that you don't want to delete that if you do accidentally delete them you may just destroy your computer. Well, maybe not destroy, but severely damage it. So, if you watch that training video, it goes into more details on how to reveal those folders, but you need to show this hidden folder application data. In fact, I'll show you how to do it here. You want to click on Tools, to go to Folder Options, come to the View tab, scroll down just a little bit, and you see where it says Hidden Files and Folders? You want to select Show Hidden Files and Folders, and then click OK and then you should be able to see it. Double click on application data, go to your roaming folder, go to Microsoft's folder, come down and double click on system certificates, double click on my, go into certificates, and there's that key, the digital ID key. If you want to write this down real quick, I'll maximize this. I'll come up here and click on the folder, and then you can get the actual address here, of course. This name right here you want to replace with your username um, if you have more than one user on your computer make sure it's the right name but that's the address Of course you would learn this in my Windows Vista level 1 training video if I haven't pushed that hard enough that when you click on the folder it changes it to the address if you go ahead and click the back arrow it turns it back into the arrows here with that the actual address but again it's the same thing just go to the users folder the name of your computer application data roaming Microsoft um, system certificates and my again once you're in the my you can go ahead and delete the key here or in the certificates right click on it and left click on delete and click yes so it's gone close out of it so when I open up my Excel workbook again and I come down to office logo to prepare to add a digital signature and click OK get my digital ID see now it's asking me to set up my digital ID again select create your own click OK but I'm not gonna do it that way I mean we've already gone that route and that's the uh, non-visible digital signature now I want to go with a visible one so instead of going through the office logo I'm gonna click on the insert tab come over here and click on the in the text group and click on the signature button and you can see when I hover over it see that little pop-up down below it has the X with the line underneath it I can type my name right next to that X click on that gives us the same disclaimer again that we saw from the office logo down to prepare to add a digital signature go ahead and read it click OK then it's going to ask me how I want to set up my signature, how I want to sign it. Do I want to sign it as John Doe or, of course, as me? And then my title, if I have one here. And then any instructions to myself here, signing. Before signing this document, verify the content you are signing is correct. I mean, you can go ahead and delete that type whenever you want, but I like it. And then allow the signer to add comments in the sign dialog box. Yeah, I like to add comments and then show the signed date and the signature line. Yes, let's have that date when it was signed and click OK. Now there's the box here. I haven't set up my digital ID yet. I just set it up so I can add my digital ID to it later and my signature. To actually set up the digital ID, if I haven't done so already, go ahead and double click on it, 
gives us the same disclaimer. Go ahead and click OK. Create my own digital ID. Click OK. Again, my name, my email address. And of course, down below you can see the little ribbon. So if I close out of the uh, task pane, you can still see the visible signature here. I can come down here and click on the ribbon that brings it up, close out, or I can double click on the signature and get some details here. Close out. Let me go ahead and open back up the task pane, right click to remove the signature and say yes, permanently remove it, click OK. And you can see that it's not digitally signed, but it has my, when I click on the drop down arrow, my signature set up. So that I can go ahead and delete and remove it and then close out. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.